the rise and fall of Siphon Filter, as well as the future of the franchise. The ever-increasing fan base for stealth action genre was further propelled by games like Splinter Cell, Metal Gear Solid, amongst many others, back in its heyday. Siphon Filter has been a prominent name in the world of stealth action games, and from the moment it was launched in 1999, it became a favorite among gamers. The third-person stealth game was developed by Idiot and was published by 989 Studios for the PlayStation. The game sold over a million copies and warranted a sequel pretty soon. The series took off and we fell in love with the exciting storylines involving the gallant and brave Gabe Logan. His quests take him all around the world, looking for Siphon Filter, a deadly virus that can be programmed and targeted towards a specific group of people. The making of the first game was quite a challenge for Adiac because they were moving away from their usual format and creating their first stealth action game. It came back from the verge of being cancelled, but after the massive reception, there was no looking back. Over the years, we've enjoyed many additions to the franchise. Some decent, some average, and some, unfortunately, bad enough to ruin the series. The last Siphon Filter game was effectively seen in 2007, when Siphon Filter, Logan's Shadow, was released. Since then, it's been a rather long break, and nobody knows if the series has ended permanently. So, in this video, we will explore the franchise in detail, and look into the possibilities of a future project. Siphon Filter This is the first game in the series, and it was clearly a showstopper. The story centered around Gabe Logan, an agent of a secret U.S. government department called The Agency. There had been a recent outbreak of viral weapons by a German terrorist, and the causes behind the events are shrouded in mystery. Gabe Logan is sent alongside his partner, Leon Singh, on a mission to investigate the matter. They travel to various places around the world, such as New York and a few places in Russia, to end this crisis. But soon, some sinister secrets are unraveled. It turns out that a biotechnical company called Farcom that was initially helping the investigation is actually involved in the conspiracy. We get to learn more about a super weapon called Siphon Filter, which, if fallen into the wrong hands, could be lethal for the rest of the world. So, who is the main culprit funding the entire episode? The hardening fans of stealth action games had just finished playing Metal Gear Solid, and they were looking for more such spy action. In comes Siphon Filter with its James Bond-like protagonist, Gabe Logan. You get to play as this secret agent and get to the roots of the evil plans of a German terrorist involving Siphon Filter. The storyline is quite mature, and we loved the intriguing cast of characters in the game. The good direction is obvious from the gameplay, and it is a fast-paced game that never allows you to go off track. The combat systems are fun and engaging as well and we loved the simple controls on offer. There were also some challenging boss battles, and it was quite a task to find out the weakness of each boss and exploit them. The helicopter boss level was particularly tough, and it takes a few tries to get the hang of things. Considering the times, the graphics were quite mind-blowing, and the detail is often astounding. The cutscenes added to the appeal of the game, and they're almost like a movie. As you track down the bad guy, the gameplay takes you through the snowy mountains of Nepal to the tropical rainforests. There is a surprising twist in the narrative when Logan finds out that his superiors were not revealing all the information to him. The review of this game would be incomplete without a word of the stunning soundtrack. We loved the electro vibe to the score, and it synced well with the gameplay. This game received great reviews, and the sales figures were impressive enough to spawn an extensive series. Siphon Filter 2. The sequel was released in 2000, and it was developed once again by Ediac and published by 989 Studios, again for the PlayStation. The events of this game pick up literally hours after the end of the first game. Logan and his partner, Leon Singh, are now dubbed as enemies of the state after they uncovered the connection between their own agency and Siphon Filter. Leon is captured, and the agency desperately tries to get Gabe Logan before he reveals their involvement. While Gabe and his fellow soldiers are traveling in a plane, it is shot down in the Colorado Rockies. One of the ex-agency operatives, named Teresa, helps Gabe in the mission to discover the truth behind the organization, and they move past many action-packed levels 
chasing the mysterious virus once again. The game ends on a note that promises a sequel, because we don't get to know what happens to Gabe in the climactic moments. If the original Siphon Filter game was received in the shadows of the mighty Metal Gear Solid, such reservations are no longer in the frame. The game takes the best bits of the original and, dare we say, makes them even better. It is a true sequel in every sense of the term, because there are plenty of references to the events of the first game. This is certainly one of the best looking PlayStation 1 games, and the graphics, especially the explosion effects, are quite impressive. It would be better if all the characters had faces, but you wouldn't let such trivial flaws worry you with such an exciting gameplay to offer. You might be tempted to believe that the game is a tad too easy, but your misconceptions would be apparent in a few minutes of gameplay. The gameplay is exceptionally well plotted, and the attention to all the little details is paramount. The fans of the sneak up genre will enjoy quite a bit of the adrenaline rush as they sneak past the enemy and accomplish their missions. There is an enormous choice of weapons to choose from, and you might use them strategically to finish off your enemy. You are bound to be engulfed in the gun-toting CIA-style gameplay, and the intriguing storyline only adds to the charm. The series even had the serious potential of transforming into movies, and maybe that would have done its popularity a world of good. Siphon Filter 3. This game changed hands in terms of developers, as it was ultimately developed by Bend Studios. It was published by Sony for the PlayStation and marked a steep fall in the popularity and reviews received after its release. The story takes place after Siphon Filter 2, and Leon, who was infected by the Siphon Filter virus, has been cured. However, the threat from Siphon Filter still remains, and it's up to Gabe and Leon to stop the evil plans. The agency continues to frame the duo as traitors and hold them responsible for crimes that they never committed. I have a different version of the truth for you. There is no conspiracy, no arms consortium, only a traitor. They must clear their names and inform the world about the real threat, because if they fail, there will be no one left to stop the deadly outbreak. You play as the characters, and through various missions, you determine the fate of the world. The changes are quite noticeable, and even without being informed, the gamer will know that the developer is new. One of the first things you will notice is the change of music. The background score is rather empty, and that is very disappointing for the fans who loved the music in the previous games. We already told you how Siphon Filter 2 did not have defined faces for some of the characters. This problem has been resolved in this game, but the issue with the music still makes it an unpleasant experience. We were also quite a bit disappointed with how Gabe Logan looked. Coming to the gameplay, you have to control the past missions of the character, including Costa Rica, before the first game. The only issue is that the game starts to feel less and less like the siphon filter that we're used to. So, were there no positives at all? Absolutely not. The story continues to be a great asset to the game, and the narrative will still hold your attention till the very end. You still get an unexpected twist towards the end, and that changes the perspective all of a sudden. The gameplay does retain some of its older features, and we loved some of the additions to the weapons in the inventory, especially the gun that can shoot through everything. In short, this is more of an average game that could be considered a decent effort had it not been a follow-up to a glamorous gaming franchise. Siphon Filter, The Omega Strain. This game was released for PlayStation 2, and once again was developed by Bend Studios. Finally, Gabe Logan is in charge of the agency. However, you would be wrong to assume that everything's fine. The menace of the Siphon Filter continues to threaten the world, and it is spreading more rapidly than ever. One more thing. Each of you were handpicked to join this team. This threat is growing. Gabe would need the help of a few new recruits, and get to the terrorists who are causing these outbreaks. But that would not be a permanent solution to the problem. He must find out the main person behind the conspiracy from the very beginning. Besides this, Logan has to locate Mara Aramov, and it is extremely important if he wants to stop World War III. This time around, you do not play as Gabe Logan, but you get to do something a lot more fun. You get to create your own agent and take charge of him. Say what you will about this game, it has to be one of the toughest siphon filter games in the series. There are tons of levels in the gameplay, and all of them are extremely difficult. Not in the impossible sort of way, but 
More is a great challenge. The levels are pretty large and they throw a wide range of objectives at you. What makes it more challenging is the scarcity of ammo in these missions. The game is a lot more online based than the earlier ones and you cannot complete the whole game without a few online bits. There are certain missions that require a teammate and without said teammate, you will not be able to achieve a few of the objectives of the mission even if you complete it. There are some cool new additions to the weapons available, and the sniper with night vision is our personal favorite. There are some glitches as well, such as the one where the action does not pause when you open the map, thus making it impossible to use it during emergencies. Bend Studios seem to have learned its lesson, and they tried to stick to the basics of the previous game that worked wonders with the fans. However, while playing the Omega Strain, we often felt like this game was better suited for the PlayStation 3, which could have done a lot better justice to the vision behind the game. Overall, this was a rather mediocre effort, and the game has no replay value whatsoever. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror PSP. This game was released for the PlayStation Portable and the PlayStation 2, and for the former, this was a perfect game. It was welcomed with favorable reviews, but the sales figures did not do justice to all the kind words about the game. With the Siphon Filter fiasco finally over, Gabe and Leon soon discovered that the threat is far from gone. Their investigations take them to Alaska and they come to terms with another project by a scientist. The missions keep getting more challenging than before, and the fate of the world is once again in your hands. Omega Strain had its share of control issues, but this time, they have been resolved. It is nice to play as Gabe Logan once again, and the aspect of stealth that has been missing for some time is back. Among the other positives of the game, we have to mention the greater variety of weapons and the ability to use the environment to prolong your cover. If we could make one thing better, it would be the storyline that somehow doesn't match up with the brilliance that we have witnessed earlier. The dramatic background music is quite pleasing, and this game does make the old fans recall some of their old nostalgia from the franchise. It is quite an accomplishment when a game defines a system. Halo did it for Xbox, and Siphon Filter Dark Mirror somewhat does it for the Sony PSP. Certain elements that have been added to the gameplay were never explored before, such as the 8-player online version that has full voice chat capabilities. The story is not really original, and it has the cliches that you will find in every tale of a terrorist threat. The gameplay is packed with lots of action, and you will love some of the intense Hollywood-style gunfights that can break out. The blend of action and stealth will make you fall in love with the game, and a robust multiplayer only makes things better. If you have loved the franchise, or even if you haven't, give this one a try for a completely different and unique experience. Siphon Filter Logan's Shadow PSP Bend Studios developed this one as well, and it was released for PlayStation Portable as well as PlayStation 2. This game is set to stun you with a rude shock in the form of a twist. The narrative starts off in its usual fashion. It is premised after the events of Dark Mirror, and another terrorist group seems to have its hands on a new dangerous technology. Logan is out on his espionage missions to save the world from various threats. However, in the course of one of his missions, he makes a startling discovery. It turns out that his closest longtime partner might have been a double agent all this time. Either she's defected, or she's a double agent. After the previous game turned out to be such a stunner, we were skeptical whether a new game would be able to live up to the hype. It turns out that Logan's Shadow is more than a worthy successor to the previous game. A lot of things change in this one, from the new combat tactics to the fast-paced action. There is even some underwater combat, and for those who love fighting games, you're in for an absolute treat. The story is back with a bang, and from suspicious characters to unexpected twists, the narrative is packed with delightful surprises. We were awed by the impeccable script, and the cliffhanger ending is something no one would ever expect. One of the new additions to the gameplay is the grenade avoidance system. You see, every time an explosive is tossed at you, an alert is sounded. It elevates the story from the last game, and the multiplayer elements take this game to new heights. The tense action keeps you on the edge of your seat, 
and the gun battles will be remembered for times to come. You might think that the franchise ended on a high, and you wouldn't be too wrong to think that. Actually, the problem was that despite the bright reviews for this game, the sales figures just did not look too good. This effectively made this the last one of the franchise, and after all these years, the situation hasn't changed. Fall of Siphon Filter There is no easy way to explain where this popular franchise lost the plot. One of the major issues for after the first few games was how the game tried to change itself a bit too much. It was no longer the same kind of fun where you could sneak around and shoot people discreetly. Siphon Filter games used to be quite challenging, and it was never intended to be a mindless shoot at sight kind of gameplay. Unfortunately, it ended up being just that, and you could run around and shoot people randomly in the later games as well. It certainly doesn't help if you decide to snatch away the very aspects that made a franchise such a big hit. We believe that the changes took this game away from the fans, and this was the rust behind the eventual collapse of the structure. John Garvin, the man who was the writer and director for the games, was burned out with the series. He was desperate to work on different projects, and this is probably the reason why he killed off Gabe Logan at the end of Logan's Shadow, so that there wouldn't be any more Siphon Filter games. The fact that the latter games didn't sell well only added to the miseries of the series. Future of the Franchise it has been a very long break since the last Siphon Filter game, and the fans have been kept waiting since then. However, there is a theory that the game Days Gone is actually more of a Siphon Filter release. There are events in the game that point to the world of Siphon Filter, and the collectibles will remind you a fair bit about the franchise. In fact, the lead designer of the game, Ron Allen, revealed in an interview that the game is indeed connected to Siphon Filter. The developers of this game are the original developers of Siphon Filter, and the influence is clearly obvious. If that is the case, then it is something to think about how a new Siphon Filter game would look like. Would it pick up from where the franchise left off, or will it dwell in the new world explored in Days Gone? Days Gone has gathered a healthy fan base over the years, but people either seem to love it or hate it. There is no middle ground. It is not insanely popular, but there have been some demands for a sequel for quite some time now. Days Gone 2 was even pitched to Sony, and the idea was shot down abruptly. However, Bend Studios is currently developing a new project, where they are exploring new open-world systems. As for Siphon Filter, the studio director of Bend Studios went on record to suggest that they might consider an addition to the franchise. Many of the developers are still keen on the project, and the question remains whether it will be worth releasing a new game in the future. It might also happen that the responsibility of a new Siphon Filter game falls on another studio because Bend Studios is far too busy with other projects at hand. It waits to be seen if Sony finds it a viable investment, and at this moment, it is best not be too optimistic about it.